and I am going to introduce Angela here, Angela Potts Manganda, and uh, her daughter Justine. They are a powerful team of prayerful people. And um, I'm going to introduce Angela as a one of our spiritual counselors, our certified spiritual counselor. She is a leader in this community. She is uh, of a highly valued member of the staff. And Justine has been in class with us for years now and um, a, a very welcome presence all the time. And I'm gonna turn it over to Angela to pray us in today. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. So grateful to be here. I feel the same way. I feel excited. Um, and Justine's quite excited. She has missed, especially the music at SWS. So we're here. So we're so grateful to joyfully place our hands on our heart and take a breath of gratitude. So grateful to be together. So grateful for our yes to spending time in spiritual community. Grateful that we can intend to open our minds fully, our hearts fully, to receive the message of truth, message of freedom. So grateful for all the blocks that have been removed that have brought us here in this moment, ready to receive even more fully the realization of our, our magnificence mm -hmm. as children of God. We're so grateful to Jennifer for delivering our inspirational message and for faith, for delivering inspiration through music. So grateful for them showing up to be vehicles of healing and expansion. So we relax and we gratefully receive the gifts that are here today, going forward to be the light that we are. We're just allowing it, we're claiming it, we're grateful, we let it be, and so it is, amen. And so it is, amen, amen, amen. All right, well, thank you so much, Angela, that was beautiful. I feel inspired and uplifted even more. And it is my pleasure to introduce my friend, Faith Rumor, who is here to inspire us with her music. She too is uh, an important part of this ministry and has been for many, many years. Uh, we've known each other 25 years. And uh, Faith started playing guitar when she was 10 years old and knew from then on that she wanted to have a career as a musician. She was really scared to sing, but her guitar teacher insisted that she sing along to the songs that she was playing. And she probably ended up playing and singing every Beatles song ever written. Faith studied music at DePaul University and then started her long career as a professional musician. She's been the music director for Agape International's Sunday evening service for 15 years. And she also served as the choir director for Reverend Jesse Bruns Inspire Spiritual Community Choir, Inspired Voices. As a member of the Agape International Choir, she shared the stage with legends and greats, including Earth, Wind and Fire, David Foster and Carl Anderson. And she's had the pleasure to perform for and share the stage with uh, speaking icons such as Marianne Williamson, Deepak Chopra and Michael Beckwith. Faith loves singing so much that she began to help others learn to sing, forming her own coaching studio in LA. It's called the Artist First Voice Studio. She presently is on staff at the AMDA Conservatory in LA and she calls her music Heartistry. So we are glad you are here, Faith. Ah, I have to add one of those people who I've had the pleasure of sharing the stage with, iconic uh, Jennifer Hadley. <laughs> <laughs> yes, many times, many, 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 many times. This song I'm going to sing for you to start out today is a chant that I wrote uh, while I was the music director for the Agape Sunday Night Service. 
and it's called I Rest in Thee. Mm. Oops, here we go. Thank you so much. So beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. Yeah, heart opening for sure. Transcendent. Mm. Oops, I clicked the wrong button here. Hang on. There we go. Ah, oh, so nice to be with everyone on this Sunday afternoon, at least where I am, it's a Sunday afternoon. And so I wrote about it today in my daily inspiration. And um, that's what I really feel interested in talking about and sharing about. So first, I would like to start with just telling you that I, I remember once when I was 
uh, leading a uh, group of youth. And uh, they were all 13, 14 year olds, maybe some 15 year olds. And one of them told a story about how uh, their best friend that they had been friends with since they were little tiny kids uh, had just uh, really started ignoring them, was hanging out with a cooler crowd and didn't have any time for them anymore and just kind of dropped them like a hot potato. And that um, they were so hurt by this. Like how, how could someone who's been my friend my whole life really uh, just abandon me for kids who uh, seem to be cooler? And of course we all know that kind of a story. We've all seen it happen or heard about it before. And um, this kid wanted to go to the friend and say, you know, you think you're so hot now, blah, 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 and really attack them, yell at them, tell them they were a fake and all of that. And uh, also kind of a, what have you done for me lately? If you haven't done anything for me lately, I, I don't need you as a friend. And I said, yeah, you know, you could definitely do that. But what is it you'd really like to have happen? You know, what is the result that you'd really like to have happen? And they kind of hemmed and hawed. And I said, isn't it that you'd like to have your friend back? Isn't that the thing you really would most like to have happen is you'd like to be able to continue your friendship with this person who's so important to you. And if you say those things, do you think you would ever get the result that you'd really most like? Or would you just be smacking them down and retaliating for what you feel they've done to you? I said, you know, it takes strength, it takes inner fortitude, and it takes courage, great willingness to be able to go to that friend and say, I miss my friend. I miss my friend. You are so important to me. And I have loved you for so long. You know, we've been through so much together. I do not want to lose this friendship. It's really important to me. Do you think we can continue to be friends? Or are you just thinking not so much anymore? What's really, what's really happening here? I said, if you could say something like that, it would be such a demonstration of inner fortitude and of course, forgiveness. And you might just get the result that you'd most like to have. But if you just go and attack that person, I don't think you're gonna get anything remotely that you would like to have. And it really gave them something to think about really did. And I hope it was very meaningful um, to them. There's often just this tendency to give as good as you get or to give worse, to be like, oh, you're going to smack me down? I'll smack you with both hands. And uh, it's just, it's the way of the ego, isn't it? And to withhold love, to punish and what I really am interested in is I'm interested in living in a world where when people behave unkindly, unlovingly, that we really can turn the other cheek and offer a new perspective. I, I used to be uh, definitely very mean and um, unkind and sarcastic. And gosh, I wish that people had had the strength to, around me to say, oh, I can see you're really hurting, you know, or you wouldn't be behaving this way if you didn't really feel that you were threatened, if you didn't feel hurt. And uh, 
I I'd like to help you through this. You know, can we talk about it? Can you t maybe tell me what's going on? And I, we can work together to move out of this place that you're in. But people didn't ever, that I remember saying that, say that to me. Instead, they'd say things like, who do you think you are? And, you know, I am not going to take your stuff and, you know, you can just F off or whatever they might say, any kind of thing that was, um, mean back to me, aggressive back to me. And then I would just double down, you know, as a lot of people do. And then ultimately I would feel ashamed. I would feel like I, here's more proof. I'm just not a good person. I'm just completely unlovable. I have no control. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. And I really made a decision some years ago. I don't want to perpetuate any of that anymore. Instead, I'd like to be able to turn the other cheek or offer a hand and say, wait a minute, there's a way back from where you are. Because I know that when there's a, a frightened dog barking at me, that they're just afraid. They're just scared. They want to keep me at a distance. At the same time, I also know that most frightened dogs would love to have you be a safe place that you could go and sit with them and pet with them and help them to be at peace and to feel calm and to stop barking and stop being threatening, stop baring their teeth. Is this, can you relate to this? Yeah. So to me, that world that I'd like to live in, it absolutely starts with us. And one of the things that we see being taught all over the place on television and in mu movies is this idea of Oh, if you threaten me, I'm going to doubly threaten you. If you threaten me, I'm going to attack you. If you say something unkind to me, I'm going to do something unkind to you. It's the double down thing. It's that punishing thing. It's the fear mongering. And we can completely turn the tide on that with everyone in our life by demonstrating how can you respond with love? How can you really actually truly be truly helpful? And it does take inner fortitude and strength, right? A weak person will retaliate, but a strong person has compassion. A strong person has the ability to extend uh, a hand to turn the other cheek. So in my blog today, my inspirational email today, I was sharing that there's someone in my life that I know not really closely or well, but they are a person who is um, integrated into my life. And um, to me, they have uh, in many ways acted like that, that person who um, if they feel threatened, they're just going to start barking and just start, um, being aggressive and, uh, threatening. And I, I was saying, and I hadn't ever really thought about this anymore, but I, I generally don't feel like people can threaten me because it's, and it's interesting. I hadn't really thought about it before, but I feel like no matter what they said about me, what names they might call me, I don't I don't buy into it. So it's, it's not going to hurt my feelings. I know 100% that is their stuff. There's no insult that they could say to me that I would be in agreement with. So 
unless you're in agreement with other people's insults, it's not a threat, right? I, I used to say that um, when I used to still feel like, oh, maybe I'm a bad person, maybe I'm evil. If somebody said to me, hey, I see you, Jennifer Hadley, and I know the truth about you. You're not really loving. You're not really kind. That's all an act. Now, it might not have been all an act, but sometimes it was. And so if somebody said that to me, it might be kind of like, ugh, ugh, they can kind of still see that, ugh. But I, I don't, I don't have that sense now that sometimes I'm mean or unkind because I'm not, I'm not. I get annoyed and frustrated and irritated uh, like everybody. And maybe occasionally I might be sarcastic or short with somebody, but I, I really, I don't think of myself as bad or unkind or unlovable anymore. And so nobody can threaten me with their opinions about me. I mean, somebody can physically threaten me and that's a different thing. And I'm really not talking about that because um, I, I, I would not put up with any abuse. But if somebody is just like a barking dog barking at me, seeing if they can scare me away, they can't scare me away, but they could make me feel like, eh, you know, this isn't for me right now. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll come back. I'll circle back to you later. You know, so I had this experience with this person. I had a few experiences with this person where they were um, angry, threatening, not physically, and um, childish, immature. And um, and the last time they were really immature, just kind of nutty, and. Um, I don't know if you've ever gotten angry like that, but I used to get angry like that where, you know, I'd walk out of the room, slam the door, and then I'd come right back in. And another thing is, you know, and then walk, storm out of the room and slam the door. And then five minutes later, come back and say, and another thing is, you know, like that. And um, just reaching for anything that I could attack them with. And, uh, Really, every time I did that, I was hoping on some level that the person would be like, hey, hey, let's just calm down and talk. Let's just, uh, hey, 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 you know, I love you. You love me. Let's just see if we can get back to some uh, harmony here, some peace and put all this behind us and have a, an adult conversation. But people didn't didn't do that with me. <laughs> Generally, they would just be like, Row! And um, and they'd be like, and another thing, and another thing from their side. So with this particular person, uh, when they had their their kind of emotional break, tirade, breakdown, childish rant thing, I I understood what was going on. And I knew it was a combination of they felt ashamed that they had made some mistakes. They had done some things uh, that had um, affected me in a negative way and through their negligence. And they were also uh, not feeling well. And I think there were other things going on in their life where they felt threatened. And so they just blew up at me in a really childish and obnoxious way. And at the time, I, I I understood for sure what was going on, that it had zero to do with me, although I had triggered it because they felt guilty about how they had um, made the mistakes that cost me the money and different things. And so, I was able to, in those moments, um, just be like, hey, what's happening now? You know, we're we're not in a fight. There's no argument here. I'm not disagreeing with you and I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying, can we talk about this? And they couldn't in that moment. 
and uh, and they were doing that thing of slamming the door and then coming back and another thing and um and i just let it be i didn't make them wrong or bad for it i just said look i understand you're in a your difficult situation today and and uh i'm sorry it all triggered you i'm sorry you're having such a hard time right now and um and we left it like that and um I didn't see them for a few months. And when I did, uh, I basically, of course, I remembered uh, that what happened before. And I knew they did too. And that they probably felt even more ashamed for having had that episode with me because it really was childish. And, um, but I just said, hey, how are you? You doing better? You feeling better? Yeah, 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 you know, and then, yeah, I'm sorry I got so upset. I'm like, D don't even think about it. It's not a big deal. Everybody loses it sometimes. It's not a problem for me. I'm not, I don't, I'm not thinking about it. It's okay. I'm just glad you're feeling better. And every time I interacted with that person after that, I made it really clear that um, I had no problem with them. I was not holding anything against them. Um, including the damage that they caused me that they never owned up to. And um, and I felt fine about that because I'm playing the long game. You know, I'm playing the long game with my life. And so what I know about God that I, I really love is I believe in, you could say, divine justice that if someone steals from me, somebody else will give to me. If someone takes my stuff, somebody else will give me stuff. That, uh, and my job is not to be attached to any of these things, but just to know that I am taken care of by the invisible field of love. And my job is to amplify and to, um, demonstrate the invisible field of love and to to live in it to know it to affirm it to trust it to have faith in it so that it becomes quite visible quite noticeable quite available for other people as well and so i i just know in all my dealings that if somebody rips me off somebody else is going to make it work and make it whole and i see it happen over and over and over again it seems like there's a loss here i don't have an attachment to it and then oh there's a gain over here so called and it's really a nice way to live because there's not a real sense of loss you know there's a sense of instead of being in the flow of being cared for and loved and and known throughout the universe and so uh, with this person, I, I just kept holding this place of love. And what I began to feel from them is that their guilt dissolving, their shame dissolving, and their genuinely understanding that I cared about them, that I was a safe place for them, that they could rely on me and uh, that I was not judging them. And now I see this, when I see this person, they're often saying, you know, oh, let me do that for you. I'll, I'll do that for you. I'll, I'll help you with that. I'll fix that for you. I'll, I'll, you know, uh, help you. Um, and I might say, you know, let me pay you for that. Oh, no, no, no. Let me just do it. I'm happy to do it. And um, sometimes they do it just without even telling me. And But I know they've done it. And I, they might be operating a little bit from guilt, a little bit. But I think it's because they genuinely are grateful that I've shown myself to be a safe person in their life who's not judging them, even when they're judging themselves. And for me, 
that behavior is still new enough in me, even though I've been doing it for a long time, it's still new enough in me uh, that honestly, the flow of love is thrilling to me. It's thrilling. It's exciting. It's energizing. It. I feel so grateful. I know when I first started as a spiritual counselor and people would call me and they, they might call me and say, you know, Jennifer, I, I'm sitting in my car right now. I just came out of my, an appointment with my doctor who told me I have cancer. I haven't told anyone yet. You are the first call and you're the first call because I just thought, I could talk with you about it. And I need to get my head around this. And I thought you you could help me with that. And to be able to talk with someone who is maybe the scaredest they've ever been in their life. You know, when you feel really, really scared, it's intense. It's very intense. Uh, and as we all know, and to be able to take that call at that point in someone's life and that to be able to be helpful to them so that by the end of the call, they're able to say, okay, all right, I think I, I think I can get, do this. I think, I think I can make the steps I need to make. And it's palpable, you know, it's really palpable that they have gone from feeling terrified to feeling more empowered. Uh, sometimes I would hang up the phone and I would just really get down on my knees and weep out of gratitude. Just so grateful that I answered the phone. You know, because sometimes it was a number I didn't recognize. I didn't know who they were. Um, but they knew me and they have my number. And because I was always speaking and, you know, doing things and so visible enough that people had my information and it's to me, when there's uh, an opportunity to be helpful, this, this is the only kind of truly helpful that really is, is what I think A Course in Miracles is about, the truly helpful of when someone feels unlovable, that we can extend love. When someone feels frightened and we can extend compassion and uh, a sense of safety. This to me is what being truly helpful really means. And to me, to know that I am available for spirit and that spirit can support other people through me that to me is my holy purpose i'm here only to be truly helpful and i think this is true for all of us and we can do it while we're doing other things you know while we're um here in in vermont there's a lot of people who work on the road so you could be somebody who works on the roads you know you could be somebody who works wherever it doesn't matter you can be a retired grandparent you can be wherever you are in your life and you can still always always be truly helpful and getting the hang of just how fulfilling and satisfying and thrilling it is is um, what I'm all about. And I'm just so very clear on that and helping people to move out of self-judgment, to be able to say when people feel like what, what they've done or what they're thinking is a horrible anomaly or just despicable or whatever they might think of themselves, to be able to say, eh, I think this stuff is kind of normal. I don't think it's that outrageous. I think you think it's outrageous, but I've talked with a thousand people and I got to tell you, it's just stuff. It's just stuff. Everybody's stuff. 
feels super stinky to them, right? And so this, all of this comes with the practice of self-forgiveness. It's all about that self-forgiveness. When we forgive ourselves, then extending the love and support to others is easy. It's natural. It's no effort. It doesn't require strength and courage anymore. That is one of the greatest benefits of really offering that self-forgiveness to ourselves is it makes us this uh, place uh, where the holy instant is always available. And that's the reason to just continue to clear out all self-judgment. So I'm going to invite you to place your hands on your hearts right now and take a deep breath of love and gratitude with me. And I'm going to invite you to think about the last time somebody behaved obnoxiously around you and you felt threatened and you retaliated, you maybe attacked, you defended yourself. Just think about that for a moment. Think about how it went. You got defensive. All the attack thoughts coming. And what if in that, in, in this moment now, you could release any judgment you have against yourself for being defensive, for attacking, for going into those old patterns once again. Just forgiving yourself for that. Meaning releasing any attachments you have to any judgments whatsoever. And just, I kind of like to shrug my shoulders and say, I did the best I could in the moment. If I had it to do over again, I would do it differently. And then think about what would you do differently now that you know what you know? How could you respond or react differently now that you know what you know, now that you've forgiven yourself and you can mentally have a do-over? Imagine yourself in that do-over now, being able to extend love and compassion, kindness, And imagine yourself maybe breathing deeply, pausing, listening to that higher voice, calling to the Holy Spirit, cultivating the willingness to not react from the past, but to be present in the now moment where the love is. I'm just taking some deep breaths and just noticing how it feels even to think about this. How does it feel? And as you're thinking about that, I'm going to ask Faith to give us another song here. Just give us a chance to really visualize this and to feel what it feels like to have this kind of a do-over. And maybe I'll do a couple of do-overs while we're listening to things.
Oh, uh-huh. 
Thank you so much. You know, I love that song so much, Faith. Yeah. So beautiful to hear you sing it. So perfect for your message today. Oh, so perfect. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do that thing we do. Our breakouts, they're not very long, but to give everybody a chance to just share what came up for them in that meditation time, the do-overs. And, and uh, so uh, in your breakouts, I'm just going to ask that you make sure everyone who would like to share gets time to share. And then we'll come back for some more music and some more prayer. And we'll uh, be right here when you come back. If you have any issues getting into your breakout room, just put something in the chat and we will help you. All right. Yeah. So Faith, would you like to share anything? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful message today. Uh, mm. And this, um, in so many, so many ways about, um, how we are, how we can really, we do have do-overs, you know, we really do. And um, it's an amazing thing. While you were speaking, I, um, I got a text from someone and I, I want to share it because it's right on point with what happened. So last night I went out to dinner with my friends celebrating my friend's birthday. And um, she was kind of in a funk. She was bemoaning that she, she was trying to, she's trying to recover from a, um, a shoulder, uh, she got in a car accident, has a really bad shoulder and she's been trying to, for a year now, trying to get over it and she feels like she doesn't really like her job and she was really having a hard time. Um, uh, she felt like she had gained a lot of weight and she couldn't fit into a skirt that she wanted to wear last night and she was feeling badly and then she kind of got very um, opinionated about some stuff and I said to her, well, I, I disagree about that. And she said, yeah, you're just being critical of me. So, and you know, there probably have been times in the past where, where I, well, things I could have said probably may have felt critical to her. And I really wanted to honor that. So I, you know, I, um, I felt like, well, I'm going to really have a, I want to sit with her and say, you know, I, I don't, never my, my, never my place to feel critical. You know, how can I support you? What's going on and everything. And I turned it over to the Holy Spirit this morning because I woke up thinking about it, right? So um, as you were speaking, I, I got this text from her. She said, well, I got a lesson in perspective. Turn out the skirt I tried on last night does fit. I was putting it on the wrong way, the back zipper, not the side zipper. <laughs> <laughs> then she said, makes me think, what else am I putting on the wrong way? That's great. And she wanted to get together for Tuesday night for her birthday. She didn't want to spend it alone. So she was reaching out. Ah. Um, just amazing. And, and just that, that what else am I putting on the wrong way? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So well observed. Yeah. So well observed. And I and I know the Holy Spirit has a part in this. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. How she great did. that she tried that skirt on again. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's the lesson. Let's try it on. Let's try it on the, the another way, right? Let's try that conversation on in another way. Mm -hmm. Let's try that picking up that phone call and asking for something in another way. Yes. And yes. Me. That's, yeah. And as you have taught me, giving it, putting it on the altar before we do anything. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Angela, how about you? Want to share anything? 
Yes, I'd love to. Um, I did get to read your blog today and it came, you know, after having experiences with Justine the day before, because uh, I get so many opportunities to practice not being pulled into her meltdown because that was part of the blog. Um, and you had said how adults can be children and they can have meltdowns. And then, so I have a child who's in the melt, you know, who has meltdowns. Um, and so it was very helpful for me to reflect because fortunately being in your community for so long, I do have, I have come to that place of, I'm not going to hold anything against myself for very long. I will definitely uh, be clear about taking responsibility, like, hmm, okay, fully, fully willing. Um, and so it was, it was really helpful to read that. And as you were presenting today, I thought of two things, because when you said it's exhilarating to be in that moment where we could poke them, poke the wound and say, yeah, you know, and it did happen in year two of Masterful Living when uh, my dad had made a mistake and my family was so upset and I didn't know about it. And I was calling to say, how are you doing? And then he told me what happened and he was very ashamed and I had zero judgment. I absolutely said that that can happen to anyone. And he was like shocked in that moment, that like such palpable moment of like, oh, I am providing such a healing response for him right now. And it's so natural for me. So that there's like a two prong thing. It's like, oh my God, I'm coming to this place where I have zero interest. Just to say, oh my God, I, I mean, I've done that. I just didn't get caught and you got caught and I've done it though. But he was, he like sent me a card. I could feel that that was, a, it was like a pivotal, pivotal moment in my own healing to say, oh my God, I mean, what could I desire more? than to be that response for someone like literally like I'm not putting you in jail are you kidding me why would I put you in jail in my mind and that was so so I get that word you used like exhilarating because I I will never forget that moment and um and the other thing you brought up with with the friend like I had a I, you know having a child and I'm we homeschool I'm literally creating community I'm like finding it I'm like it's like we're a tuning fork all the time. Like, are we resonating? Do we, are we, or maybe we're just, and I've had so many awesome learning experiences of people distancing themselves from me. And I don't know why. And it happened once and I noticed, and now I'm, I keep getting more and more compassion for myself, which is helping because then it helps me have compassion for others, which is what your blog was about. And I, I had a new insight about how my response to being distanced from was so primal. It was like, oh, that's my tribe. You're kicking me out of the tribe. I can't be in the tribe. I have to be in the tribe. It's so survival. And then I realized, oh, wow, you're in your ego survival mode. You have a primal instinct that took over and you acted on it. But as you today said, what would be the do-over? And it's like, hmm, you sit with those primal urges where you're like, I can't, you know, and you're like, whoa. Um, and then now I love being able to be in a relaxed place where I've forgiven myself. I have compassion for myself. So I can revisit that timeline and say, wow, what could I have done different? Not that it's wrong because because I've had more insight that like, girl, you didn't want to be kicked out of the tribe. You felt like that was like a sort of a death. Like I can't leave the tribe. So it's it's beautiful, the journey. And now even being grateful that I had this fallout with the tribe and being like, wow, that's, that's a growth opportunity. And now knowing that it was like coming back to, okay, you know, um, the true tribe, the true safety coming from the sense of I'm secure. I'm never alone. I don't actually need anyone's friendship. So now I can welcome it, hold it lightly, dance with it, 
So yeah, so much gratitude for um, the way you take something in life that seems simple, but it's not, and you let us come back to it for more healing. So thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, I appreciate what you're saying there, Angela, and you too, Faith, because life is always presenting us with the inspiration, with the learning, with the help that we need. And, you know, in the Manual for Teachers and the Development of Trust section, it says it takes great learning to recognize that everything is helpful. And it does, but when we can approach life that, okay, this is helpful to me. This mess is helpful to me. This upset is helpful to me. This seeming disaster is helpful to me. Let me receive it that way. Let me receive it as a helpful experience instead of claiming it as being against me. As I'm now I'm a victim. Uh, I think it's so interesting that we live in a world now where we literally have world leaders walking around going, I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. And like, how did we put these people up for leadership? Like, is that what a leader does? Goes around crying, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. So, um, and because it takes real inner fortitude to say when people are slinging arrows and attacking and, and doing whatever they're doing and to say, somehow this is for my good and I am here to be a loving presence and I don't have to defend myself. I don't and I won't, you know, I can, we can go over the facts, we can talk about the truth but I'm not going to move into that defensive posture. I, I think one of the most helpful things to me, I know I've said it a million times, is that teaching in A Course in Miracles, that if I defend myself, I am coming from that secret desire to attack. And every time you ever feel moved to defend yourself, just notice, do you have that secret desire to attack? Because I, I, I always see it in myself i always see it in myself and when people are defensive with me i i always know that's a tip off they have a secret desire to attack me they do and so let's just recognize that and and um and then see can we apply love can we apply love can we be that loving presence in all of our communications and all of our connections be that loving presence and in doing so it challenges us it strengthens us and gives us that opportunity to be courage uh to be courageous i'm watching a movie i haven't watched the whole thing i watched part of it yesterday i'm gonna watch the rest of it later on netflix and it's called the giver the giver and it's only on Netflix for a couple of weeks more. And it's with Meryl Streep and Jeff Bridges and um, uh, Kate, Katie Holmes. Um, and it's about a future kind of dystopian world where people literally take medication every day so they don't have much emotion. Yeah, it's quite, it's interesting. It's, I, I definitely would recommend it. All right. So we're back from our breakout here. People are, everybody's coming in. How was that breakout? Was it good? Was it helpful? Yeah, I'm telling you, whenever you have some regret or you don't feel comfortable about how you behaved in a situation, uh, mentally walk through it in a do-over it's really healing that is a self-forgiveness practice and it's very educational i highly encourage you to to start to do that as part of your spiritual practice all right it certainly has been um gosh life-changing for me yeah so 
I am going to make some announcements and then I'm going to turn it over to Faith, who's going to give us another song. And then Angela will give us another prayer. And then Bodhi gets to go for a walk, my dog. So, <laughs> and I know she'll be happy about that. So uh, announcements. Uh, I reopened Masterful Living for a short time and that time ends tomorrow. So if you miss the deadline, you want to get into Masterful Living this year, join us now. You can probably even still book an exploratory call today and uh, with one of the spiritual counselors who can answer any questions that you have. And we have Faith and a Angela have oh, been a long time members of the, the community and others here are part of that community. And uh, then Quantum Counseling, the seminar program with 16 different A Course in Miracles teachers we have our second class on Tuesday. You can still join us in that program. 16 of Course in Miracles teachers sharing what they've learned about working at the level of the mind through being counselors of people with the Course in Miracles principles. So I'm very excited about this program. And uh, I, uh, I taught the first class. And of course, you can jump right in and get the first class and then join us for all the rest. And in, if you're interested in any kind of training around counseling, opening up your intuition, feeling more confident, uh, improving your relationships, my quantum counseling training intensive. The, so it's the intensive training for spiritual counselors, which is part of the certification program is in May live in person in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I'm following that with on Memorial Day weekend, we're doing a four day program, how to create and lead workshops that make a difference. So you can do these two events back to back. I'm doing them this way because people travel sometimes from across the world and it just makes it easier if we can do them back to back. So, um, both of those, I've got an amazing early bird special on those right now. And so I encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity. And it includes a bonus gift of that quantum counseling program with the 16 Course of Miracles teachers. So that's a really nice bonus gift. And as always, uh, these services are done on donations. So if you appreciate them, I invite you to please consider making a donation. Uh, one of the best ways to do that is to sign up for the inspirational text messages. You can sign up for free and you can also decide to make a one-time or monthly contribution when you sign up. And I'm going to turn it over to Faith. Um, first of all, I do want to say, if you're thinking about masterful living and you're kind of on the fence, it's life changing. Um, it really has changed my life. Absolutely. Jennifer and I started, I think uh, maybe in your prototype, there were three of us. It was Jesse and myself. It, 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 we started. You had the That same. was the first Ascension Pathway, actually. The first Ascension Pathway. That's right. Yeah. After Masterful Living. Yeah. That, that's right. And I, that's right. It was pretty amazing. Um, and then the workshop is a really leading how to lead workshops. I took that last year. Really, really very. You'll get all of the information that you need. You'll be inspired. You get to practice what you want to do. So it's really incredible. Uh, on my part, I have a class coming up starting this week again. Uh, it's an eight-week class. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat and you can see what it's about. It's called Find and Empower Your Feelings. Um, and it's uh, an eight-week class to dig in and find out and open up your body where all your emotions are stuck when we're not expressing them. It's that that movie that you were talking about where people are now taking medication not to feel, it's like the idea is not to numb out. We don't want to numb out of our life. So in this class, we actually open it up and then empower ourselves to be able to use those feelings powerfully in our life and in our work, if you're a creative person. So you can, there's a, there's a 
link there for to register for the class but I also have a free training this week if you want to jump in into that and if you're interested in voice and um, acting co coaching you can reach me at faith at the artist first that email okay and faith is is a world-class teacher I kid you not so oh, thank you Jennifer Thank you, thank you. I'm also going to put in our chat the lyrics to our clothing, so closing song. I'm singing the song again, Someone Needs a Prayer, because for, for me, it's so up in our world today. We have to pray for our world today. That is going to shift and change everything more than anything you can ever imagine. Prayer will make a difference. So this one's called Someone Needs a Prayer Today. Someone's in need of a prayer today. Have you done your part? Someone's in despair this day. Have you prayed from your heart? So many are trying to find their way.
it sets us free. Our prayer sets us free. So pray, oh pray, oh let your prayer today and set yourself, set yourself free. Another one of my favorite songs. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank yes, you. Yes. What a blessing. What a blessing you are to us. Thank you, Faith. Oh, I'm so glad we got to be together today. And I'm going to turn it over to Angela to send us home with a prayer. And thank you to Arthur. Thank you to Angela. She was our pilot today, as well as our prayer and uh, thank you to Faith. Thank you to everyone. Thank you for joining us and being part of the power of love. Hey, thank you. I'm so grateful to place my hands on my heart and to feel our loving vibration, having spent this time together. Thanking you, Jennifer, for your beautiful message and the invitation to revisit those circumstances, our memories, the situations where hurt or fear is still residing. We're so grateful we can revisit these experiences and reset them with a new loving intention. So grateful, Faith, for your musical accompaniment, opening our hearts. And so we're grateful to take this healing and these experiences forward into our week. Grateful that we can be the fulcrum point of healing in our families, in our communities, in our world. We're so grateful to know that love is the healer and that we are love. And we are going forward, letting spirit help us navigate all of the places where we can get tripped up. And so we are ready and we are grateful and excited go forward as the light of God. We let it be, and so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you, everyone. God bless you.